With the arms, you want to use more pressure going towards the heart for circulation. The big endangerment area on the arm is the anterior part of the elbow there. Good way to warm up the arm is a lot of effleurage techniques, those kind of gliding techniques. And again, whenever you're using techniques, try to use at least three in a row. Try to connect one part of the arm into the next. It just helps with that nice fluid flow. You can even separate the arm a little bit there. But again, more medium to light pressure. And in general, again, more pressure towards the heart if possible. But every now and then it's going to be different. It's not going to hurt him at all. This is a really good deep tissue technique. You're kind of stripping the forearms there. And if you're, if you're performing it right, a lot of times the fingers will open up a little bit. This next one is called a shimmy. You're just going to go kind of back and forth really fast, but only if they are relaxed. So if they're not relaxed, it's not a good idea to use this kind of technique. You want to relax everything first. There you can see you can just shake it a little bit just to see how relaxed they actually are. And if this was a regular massage, you'd want to keep contact and keep the flow going at all times. Again, this is just for demonstrational purposes. Whatever you perform on one arm, you want to make sure you're performing on the other two. It just helps even them out. This is called a ratchet technique. It's kind of a stretch and massage all in one. This is a different way to perform the ratchet. So you rotate and go cross fiber friction. And the one before that was more longitude friction though, so that was with the muscle grain. And this way you're going the opposite way.
in this technique is called the snake bite. But you remember when you're young, more than likely people tortured you with this, so <laughs> be careful with this one. Just kind of go back and forth, kind of ringing motion. You can rotate the arm when you perform a little gliding. You can kind of stretch out the arm. See again, see how relaxed they are. And just be aware, make sure the breast tissue is covered at all times. And there I kind of lifted up the sheet so I can go underneath the upper back a little bit. And this is even better pull when they hold on to your wrist and you hold on to theirs. And this is more of a broadening technique, spreading out the areas. Remember, you can always position the arm in a different position, especially if they have larger breast tissue. You don't want to squeeze that at all, so that's why you bring the arm over there. And here, you're kind of giving yourself a massage a little bit, but you don't have to tell the client that, of course. And that's an endangerment site right there, the anterior part of the elbow. So don't try to use a lot of pressure. It's more of a broad pressure. And this is a stretch a little bit, more of a compression stretch. And this is another ratchet technique, but for the forearm. So flex the wrist and then slide it up the extensors. And this one, extend the wrist and slide up the flexors. But directly right in the center, that's the median nerve. Try not to use a lot of pressure on that area. When that gets impinged, sometimes they can have like carpal tunnel problems. kind of gently lift up the arm and again to see how relaxed they are and if they're not relaxed they're gonna help out so the arm could should just kind of like float down And if you ever heard of reflexology, it's a study of the feet and the hands. So everything in the feet and the hands relates to everything in the body. Right there, we're going to kind of separate the wrist region. And you can turn over the palm and get the other side of the wrist. But try not to put a lot of pressure right directly in the center. Because again, that's where the median nerve is. And you can spread out the palm there.
construction workers, carpenters, mechanics, those type of people that use their hands a lot, gripping things, they're going to appreciate these kind of techniques even more. You can use your knuckles, get a little bit deeper pressure. friction off the fingers. And don't forget about the thumb. circular friction technique off the fingers. That's what I call the pinky pinky rapid spread it. So pinky in there, pinky in there, wrap all three fingers on each side, and then the thumb we're going to spread the palm in. in the middle finger, and then two fingers in between the thumb and the index, and then one finger in between the ring finger and the pinky. It's just a little bit of different stretch, then again you can spread out the palm. Stretching. Stretching, it's always a good idea. Slow in, maintain it, then slow out. This is kind of stretching out the wrist region. Kind of a circular friction with the palm, kind of warm up those areas. Try not to use a lot of pressure right in the median nerve there. Stretch out each finger. You can use your whole knuckle or your whole palm to massage their hand. a compression stretch there. You can 
can use a little bit of a ratchet technique there. You see as you can extend the fingers and then spread the palm. Right there is large intestine 4 in Asian medicine, that's really good for headaches. But if a woman is pregnant, don't be pushed in that area. Just a relaxation technique, just to see how relaxed they are, make sure they're not helping out. You want a little bit more direct pressure, just one knuckle. Massaging the palm on most people feels awesome. This is a way to massage more of the tricep area so you, so you don't have to flip them over. And also the pec region. And this, I'm gonna give a little bit of extra pull. And massage at the same time. This, I'm going to horizontally adduct, bring the arm across their chest, and you can kind of glide. This is more of a compression stretch. A lot of people have tight pecs. We'll make sure you spend a little bit extra time there.
And this is just, again, another kind of stretch. And you can either massage in that kind of position too. More of a vibration kind of technique. This I'm going to stretch out both the arms at the same time and make sure the breast area is covered because if it's not, that area can be exposed in this kind of technique. Or if you can, grab both arms just one at a time then. Now we're going to go to the leg region. And just undrape whatever areas you're going to actually massage. Some people will do a little tuck there. Just to keep the sheet in place. And some people will do a Roman drape, as you can see there. Pull it underneath the leg. If you're going to perform any kind of stretching, it helps keep everything in place then. The main major endangerment area on the anterior part of the leg is the patella. Try not to use a lot of pressure to move that around too much. And also the groin region too. You just got to play caution when you massage around that area. And if somebody has a lot of hair on their legs, you have to use a little bit more oil. Lotion sometimes doesn't work as good, so that's why, again, oil works better. But if the person has like three or four day hair stub stubbles, it's harder to use a lot of gliding techniques up because it kind of feels like you're exfoliating your hand. So you might have to use some smaller techniques and even away from the heart a little bit. But in general, you want to try to go towards the heart with more pressure and away from the heart uh, with less pressure. So again, towards with more pressure, away with less pressure for circulation-wise. As you can see, we're kind of stabilizing the ankle, get a little bit more pressure gliding up. You can perform broadening techniques. So some of the techniques you used on the arm, you can use, even use on the legs. Use your knuckles if you want a little bit more deeper pressure. And if somebody is ticklish in general, you'd want to use more of a firmer pressure, especially with your palms. 
If you use more of your fingertips, it's going to be more ticklish. Sometimes even with the knuckles, it can be ticklish too. But an open, firm palm usually works the best. And if the knee is a little bit bent, the patella is more stabilized. But if it's totally flat, it's going to move around more. And people will use a bolster underneath their knee to relieve tension off the hamstrings and that can help with some lower back issues. So if somebody has lower back issues, it's a good idea to have the person have a bolster underneath their knee in the supine position. And if they're in the prone position, you'd want one underneath their ankles to relieve a little bit of that pressure. And I always try to perform each technique at least three times, of course. <laughs> 